Montana és una marca d'esprais i crec que parlarà com es pot fer servir el carrer com a terreny de joc per la llum. No s'embruta res i també podem envellir-la. M'equivoco? Parlaràs d'això? Molt bé, doncs donem la benvinguda a l'Arcadi. Hola a tothom. Com veig que tenim traducció simultània, parlarem català, que estem a Girona. En primer lloc, doncs, moltes gràcies a l'organització, Xavi Bové, per convidar-me a aquest projecte. Jo crec que és un projecte que ve molt interessant, en el qual... I crec que és un projecte que va passar per un punt molt interessant, en el qual la llum és una discussió, no només un tool, sinó una discussió, i després del boom de la llum, un altre projecte com aquest. I crec que és un projecte que va passar per un punt molt interessant, I have to say that I don't come from the world of mapping, as my colleague here has mentioned. I've had many contacts with it, but basically my background is related to the project development of urban art or urban creativity, which is the term with which I feel more identified with. And well, I am always thinking about where the frontiers lie between art and non-art. And I have a couple of um, publications as well related to light. Uh, so this is what I, I wanted to say, and I'm going to... My, my intervention today is a look from the street artists from the urban artist and how we can see light use in different lines as a plastic element, we could say, uh, artists who paint with light, so to speak. These are not so spectacular projects such as the mapping projects, sometimes they are like small things. And well, I have to say that the city is an extremely fertile territory for creativity, and when we add light, the possibilities are endless. So having said that, what I'm going to do is first of all to introduce you to what are the key points of the thought of the urban artist, of the contemporary street art artist. Maybe they are going to be a bit philosophical from my understanding. And then after this brief introduction, I will give you a series of, I will show you some projects with different um, working lines from different artists. So I always start with, well, this has nothing to do with, with light, but this is a fragment of a documentary, The Man on Wire, I guess that you know it. When Philippe Petit crossed the Twin Towers in New York when they were being built, why do I show this video? Why do I play this video? Because I have a great artist whose name is Suso 33 in Madrid, and he always says, this is human art, this is not urban art, it is human because when we are on the street, all this relation, everything that happens on the street uh, might not happen in a closed place, in a museum, etc. So, this short clip helps me to introduce in this thought of the urban artist and the risk, the adventure involved, the poetics of it, far from the market, far from many other things that are always so close and so rooted to the cultural establishment. I will show you some videos so I don't have to talk so much, and it will be more fun. I start walking as a wire walker who is studying his cable. 
And instead of doing an entire study of the cable for the whole lens, seeing the first cavality and keep walking, seeing the middle, which is so soft and treacherous, seeing the second cavality, how it is. No, I do only go to the first cavality and I know enough. Now I'm going to perform. I saw his face changing. He was very tense and all of a sudden there was something uh, like a relief in him. And from that time I thought, that's it, he's secure, it's good, and wow, that's... Uh, that <laughs> C'était l'extase de voir cette euh, image de Philippe couché là-haut. Et puis l'autre moment très très fort, c'est quand il... Euh, il vous très... C'était tellement beau. Et euh, quand il s'est agenouillé, il y a un moment où... Il s'est agenouillé et il a salué. Et donc, euh, et donc je criais, regardez, regardez, et les gens ont commencé à, à se rassembler, mais personne ne voyait. Et ils me disent, mais qu qu'est-ce qu que vous voyez Et je leur disais, mais un funambule, regardez, un funambule, il marche, il marche. I sit down on the Y in one of my crossings and I did something that amazed people, I actually look all the way down to look at something that I will never in my life see again. So I can tell you, and yes, probably it's a lie, but to me it's not, I heard the crowd, I saw the crowd, I hear them murmur. Beyond anything you can ever imagine. It's just mind-boggling. The awe of the event and the overwhelming largeness of the scale of the situation took my mind into a place where I really wasn't that concerned about him. It just, it, it was magical. It was just, uh, it was just profound. Well, this concept of risking of um, risking your life without nobody seeing you almost, all this spirit is very, very common uh, for people who work on the street. We are just for to, to do some guerrilla. And the documentary talks more about, it's more about producing on the street. And I, I don't know whether you've seen it all, but I can, I really recommend it to you. And just landing, I always like to read um, a text by Steve, which is a conceptual artist from Valencia, and the image. This is like a, a light mural and he wrote a text for the first book I published who talked about this look from the street and the street is an disorganized and chaotic space. It's a marginal position where adolescent immigrants, lovers, travelers, artists, and other outsiders uh, are together. I'm not talking about the physical street, but the poetic street where nobody is uh, God or slave. The street is a free process a nebulous, dark and wild, but sweet at the same time, an invisible space that appears and disappears and that cannot be defined because it has no rules, no parameters, no coordinates. The street only exists while it is the street, and no institution, museum or book can never preserve it. This is good, and um, this was for my book, right? 
Vale. Um, para acabar esta situación, so, I'm going, just going to go through this quickly, but it's important that when we work on the street, we abandon the classical idea of how culture has to be consumed. And then I go over the, the tyranny of the establishment of art and culture that are destroyed when we um, take these artist um, actions out of the establishment. The tyranny of a public who is not willing to consume a piece in a, in a given way. Perhaps mapping is different, but in general, in the... Um, in urban art, this tyranny is, is destroyed. There's an honest response. Hmm? You don't have to pay for a ticket. The tyranny of the frame, this is great for, for mapping. Everything has to be framed with a little frame. But this is destroyed on the street, and not only in the case of mapping, but also plastic arts. The stage tyranny where the author is, is not above the audience, generating a kind of hierarchy, and the tyranny of the market, because the work is not on sale, it's not for sale, so it's not subject to sale. So creation is always going to be freer. And the author tyranny, because uh, very often the works are not signed, uh, or, or people uh, doesn't know about the author. And the, I would like to see some sculptures, for instance, um, if they were on the street. What was the generation, the, the reaction of people? from experts. Hmm? Situationism, because this is the great philosophy, mapping artists practice it in all their lives, generally. But this is basic. How do we place uh, each other in a, an architectonical space or in a social context or a cultural context? And when we take all of this into account, we can say that we have a, a, well, a perfect work that is not repeated in any other place, because then it would be impossible. That would be impossible. And now, four basic principles from this regard of the outlook of the urban artist, of this creative use of light on the street, or seeing light as a plastic element. Well, the principle of the volume, evidently, all of the volume and all can be projected. Principi de la no llum o de, o de la ombra, no? Tot, tot allò que és projectat genera una, la ausència de llum. Everything that is projected generates an absence of light. Hmm? So this is what many urban artists do when drawing the city. Hmm? They, the light, if we want to take advantage of the light, the light um, changes continuously, it's never the same. Maybe interventions such as the, 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 the mayors in Chichen Itza, where uh, you can see the feathered serpent, and we understand this movement of light, we can create works that only work for some hours in the year and the night, the beginning of the night. If we understand the city as a great stage, artistic stage, this great stage has the same light project every night. So they propose a series of games that are really taken advantage of and people who base their work on that. And then we have different interventions, such as the uh, a light sculpture, a classical light sculpture. This project by uh, Genève, La, La Désir et La Menace. And it was published in the first uh, book, where there's another text that I would like to read. Uh, this project and this image have to do with a feeling, not with a concept, feeling that there's a reality that exists and another that is invisible. We are sorry. We know that something is different, that something can change, something is going to be transformed, perhaps. There are many readings, ecological, psychological, and philosophical. It is nice and seductive, but there's a mystery and danger and fragility, but fragility can be strong and strength can be fragile. 
everything has to do with life. So basically these are uh, mesh structures that allow the light to go through and they generate these poetic pieces that play with nature in the city. Another like Darkham made with human figures and here we have the big uh, sculpture, as we understand, that a, 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 a gigantic mesh. Mm? If we can think about light sculptures, I don't know if you know Janet Eschelman, but she has a very interesting uh, project that you can find in Google, and the, the audience lit the, the, the installation, and there's a short video, that's a four-minute video where she explains herself. Jenna and I met at TED in 2011. Her sculptures had I take soft materials and make shapes the size of buildings. Janet and I have been talking about ways to create an interactive version of one of these sculptures. And Chris Anderson from TED reached out to Janet and said, this is a, a perfect opportunity to create potentially your largest sculpture. Fantàstica de crear una escultura gran. És la primera vegada que a la meva feina podrà... Eh, que farà que les persones influenciïn el que veuen. Uh, aquesta és una escultura al cel, diguéssim, que es va fent a través dels, dels participants. Moltes, milers de persones es poden connectar amb els telèfons i poden veure aquest com flueix. És la següent generació, el següent nivell. I totes aquestes dades doncs, es combinen i creen aquestes escultures en temps real. Als Estats Units, a la costa oest, a l'estat de Washington, és una zona on hi ha una gran tradició pesquera i uh, les cordes estan fetes de fibra que són 50 vegades uh, més fortes que d'altres. Aquestes són les que, fem, les que hem utilitzat en aquesta estructura. Això ha estat una de les instal·lacions que suposa un repte més gran perquè està enmig d'una ciutat molt activa. Hem estat instal·lant això cada nit, aixecant aquestes cordes, i hi ha hagut molts enigmes, molts interrogants, mentre ho fèiem. Per exemple, la corda doncs, es va enganxar amb un arbre i uh, hem hagut d'aixecar aquesta escultura, molts metres. Durant anys he estat explorant com fer que les persones formin part de l'obra d'art. I ara, amb aquest art interactiu, la gent pot pintar i dibuixar amb la llum i convertir-se en co-creadors. Ha sigut fantàstic veure la cara de la gent mentre participava en això. Jo vaig imaginar que podia fer servir el telèfon així. Ha estat meravellós. Ha estat com un regal veure com la gent interactuava i formava part d'aquesta obra i pintaven. És una cosa que un no espera trobar-se al carrer. I és, eh, el fet és que apartar-se completament de la rutina, mirar al cel i canviar la perspectiva. Hem, hem, hem dedicat molt de temps, molta energia al nostre equip, però veure els somriures de la gent, les expressions de la cara, doncs va ser fantàstic. Eh, i i, i m'agrada, no?, el, el fet que sigui una cosa temporal, que es fa i desapareix. M'agrada aquesta. Tots estem convergir, tots convergim en aquest espai i després desapareix, desapareixerem. Bueno, aquest, era interess... Perdón. aquest era un projecte interessant, més perquè també, encara que no 
si una cosa estàtica, dintre de tot, doncs sí que té una certa espectacularitat. Jo us recomano que viatgeu una mica tant l'obra de la Janet Eshelman. Ah, I just recommend you to check Janet Eshelman. If you think you understand quantum physics, you don't understand quantum physics. Sí, que, 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 que... Esperem una mica més per la festa, no? A veure, on estàvem? I ara passaríem a un altre concepte, que seria més el del mural lumínic. Més que el mural lumínic, és com l'artista urbà, en aquest cas l'artista, utilitza aquesta llum, aquest projecte lumínic que ha de fer la ciutat that the city has, understood, uh, understanding uh, the city as a stage, and we find well, such as Skirk. This is a quite a recent work where the artist um, used these two lights to generate an image. This is an exploration line that started some years ago. The first time I saw it was um, in a uh, Russian artist, Pavel Pukhov, who died uh, like three years ago. And he started uh, with these practices by always playing with, with this light. Um, before I've mentioned SUSO 33, no podia fer aquesta conferència sense parlar d'ell. Ell sempre ha utilitzat l'escènica, les arts escèniques i la llum. I en projectes molt de turbà, de moralisme, però molt diferent. No podia fer aquesta conferència sense posar-vos alguna peça d'ell. Però en aquest cas no us posaré una peça de carrer, sinó un mural. Però no us posaré una peça de carrer, sinó un mural. Però en aquest cas sí que seria un mural lumínic. Aquest té un spray lumínic. He has a spray that was designed with a team, together with a team, which is a light spray that uses this retro projection and eliminates light wherever he goes through. And this is a, like a video art piece that has been given many awards. And I think it was interesting to see més en la línia del mural en directe utilitzant la llum. The live mural, using light. It's not clothing. Let's try again. In this case, he doesn't use the spray, but he uses markers, but he uses light. Sorry, but you can't see that like that. Ara passaríem a un altre... Now we would go to... Thank you all for joining us today to celebrate the life of Brenda Amelia Arnaud. Where are you? Brenda was well-loved. 
She spent her adult life. Perdón. Vale, pasaríamos a otra. So now we would capítulo, go to another short chapter, or another exploration decir, line, so to speak. That would be the volume, volumetric projection, or that projection that uses volume but in a static way, as if you were creating a mural on volume, but with light. So we have the Clément Brian project that works through projections in very unusual modalities that proposes another interpretation of images in space. Another, they use prototypes made by hand that project large-scale images and he makes the soul of places appear. According to what he says, I try to show that we can create our own tool for expressing ourselves. Citizens are losing their roles, are builders of society. So in this project of um, the Cambodian trees, where he uses this, uh, the volume of the tree to show an image. It, there's no movement. This is a, a completely static image. But it's, it, this, this, this is a reinterpretation of nature in the city. Other projects, uh, like uh, on, on whole islands or big structures. Then we would go to the, with the concept of installation. The installation is what you say, how you label something you don't know how to label. And in this case, I wanted to show you a couple of projects by Marcos Stotes, the unstable, your text here, because basically this was an interactive installation with all the simplicity of the world, uh, you could send uh, text messages and they appeared. This was a time lapse of all the messages sent by people. It was a way of democratizing uh, communication in, in public spaces, of opening this frontier of participation so that everyone can have their say. It was like a common wall, a community wall. This is one of the projects he has. He has many others. He usually works with light. Or the project Emission, where the artist makes uh, social criticism uh, of how we are always being observed. And he plays a spotlight in a place in the city where there's no light uh, every time the cell um, opens the light. Or, and people are scared. Hmm? And then we have a classic. I guess that most of you know it. This is a very old project, but a very interesting project anyway, which is the Graffiti Research Lab. For me, this is the first time that I see that a project that is merging with a perfect balance, the graffiti culture or the bombing and throw up with a light project. I'm going to play a short video. It's basically a laser. Okay, go ahead. The latter's laser the means there's light amplification by stimulated emission of radiation. Pass me the laser beam. I make me wipe off the wicked and clean. 
It's more of the same, and we realize how much fun they have. I have to say that this project has gone around the world, and I wouldn't, I don't know what year it is from, but I think it's over 10 years of age. And one of his creators was Ivan Roth, who created it with open source, and then many companies have taken advantage of these codes, and they've been selling private services. This is like a common pathology. Then we would uh, talk about a Madrid collective who has been uh, dealing with uh, light projects on public spaces. And as they say, light, garbage, recycling, and simple materials taken from our environments are our inspiration. Life in the city, uh, nature, the vindication of social vindication are our Trojan horse. And I'm going to show you a project made in Melbourne, if I'm not wrong, literature versus traffic. <coughs> I think that the relation is uh, a book without light is of no use. So they wanted to deal with this relationship. What we see here is what happened when we give some light to a book. It, it, the, the book takes an another dimension. It's like an element for playing, it's like a toy, or for inter interacting in a different way. Bueno, 
iniciativa para que la gente se acoste. It's a good initiative for people to get closer to books. Seguim y entraríem... And let's continue with yeah, the, the, the final phase when the absence of light is a virtue or is a strength and how is this taken advantage. Shadow street art, I mean the name in English is more glamorous than in Spanish. And then we have artists like Michael Neff. Uh, the Night Shadow Project is born with the intention of sharing a phenomenon that I find beautiful. In while traveling at night in the cities, I, I found shapes on the lights that are on at night. I wanted to preserve these projections, and I started to delineate their contours with chalk, and chalk, as well as shadow, is um, fugacious um, materials. They were sometimes they lasted for two years, and in other cases, they were erased the next morning. So these projections are repeated every night. Mm? That they never, they would never work during uh, the day. Uh, they generate this play with this game with space. This is another um, French artist who's called Zeus, who does similar things, but from the a mural perspective. And we have this sculpture called the cedar. By Morphi, and this is a double life sculpture because it plays with the same concept as before. Every night, the same uh, light is projected, and the sculpture is brought to life. And these kind of games have make these pieces to have a, like a double life. They are in constant mutation. Another type of installation. Here we could talk about a um, uh, shadow uh, mural. This is a um, spy. Um, um, uh, uh, an artist from Madrid. We could have a time lapse and see how it it changes with the sun, with exposure to sun to the sun. Other artists uh, like o Oak, who always plays with everything he finds, is more based uh, in humor. We see the Snoopy. Or artists like Kumi Yamashita, who uses um, light. He, she is not an, an urban artist. She's an indoor artist because the light, the type of light she needs is very specific. It's a very, with a series of, um, of volumes, she makes projections. Um, this is um, a, a certain anamorphical vision, and after this play, it, this deformation is generated, that this is what gives meaning to the piece. And then, just to finish, I wanted to tell you about a project where the light plays a more important um, role, but it's in a poetic this is a collective project uh, where I've been the artistic director, a project in Granada to celebrate the millennium of Granada, of the city of Granada. And we wanted to represent a culture, a city. And from there, we developed an initiative with Jorge Rodriguez Gerada, which is called the, the Composed Identity. And for 10 days, we had uh, such a um, technical equipment. 3D scanners, uh, handheld scanners that we placed in a truck, and we went through all the districts in, in Granada scanning uh, neighbors' faces, and we had like around 600 scanners. Every time a participant was introduced, we had some data, and then with another software that we developed, we had like the, uh, we got have the average of uh, faces for each uh, district. All of this, and then at the end, we made an installation, like 1,000 granadas, where 1,000 granadas at the Casa de Zafra, which is the cultural center of the Albaicín, 
one of the most important neighborhoods where these 1,000 Granadas played with the light. They played with natural light, and there was like a shadow uh, trajectory, and they were being transformed constantly, and they were reflected on water. And well, that's it. Thank you very much. Let's take a break and